And be sure to check out other videos from Craft and Sprout Tiny Homes, based in Connecticut, right on this channel. <laughs> so we've talked about pallets a little bit before. And I mean, honestly, how many of you plan to do something with pallets? Yeah? <laughs> You guys are just being nice. They're free. Yeah, they are. They're but free. They, I want to be the guy, amongst others, who say, uh, who, who let you know, like, it's there's a lot of work involved, as you're going to see in a second. But again, you can saw them and just burn them. Yeah, you can burn them. We'll get as to that in a second, too. Yeah. Yeah. Or for yeah, starters, yeah. HT. Look for the HT stamp, which uh, oftentimes you'll see in the sides. This one has a couple cryptic stamps. <laughs> Sometimes when they're older, the stamps fade or they're worn off. HT means heat treated. The reason they do that before they ship something, say, from Indonesia or wherever to the U.S., they have to treat the wood because inherent in the wood could be certain invasive insects that you don't want to ship over here. You know, the gypsy moth, the winter moth, the, you know, whatever. There's so many of them. Um, so, they're, in essence, they're cooking the wood. The other treatment method will have sometimes an MT or MB stamp on it, but I've only seen it like once or twice, so they're pretty rare, With this, which is methyl bromide, which is like a fungicide, which is pretty poisonous. They just spray the pallet with poison uh, to kill off whatever's in it. So you don't want to make like a crib for your, you know, sister-in-law's newborn or things like that out of the MB or MT pallet wood. Um, you also want to be kind of picky when finding wood, looking for a couple things. You don't want these planks here, the top of the slats to be too thin. Unless you need thin wood, they're going to bust. You're not going to have a great success rate in cutting them off and prying them from the uh, central strut. And uh, look for cleaner stuff, obviously. If, if this pallet's been sitting out for a long time, it's, there's going to be all sorts of things growing on it. It's discolored, there's mildew, potentially some mold. So keep up for that. Uh, keep an eye out for that. So a couple of the methods, uh, methods depending on what you're going to use this for. This is a nice heavy pallet. Cool thing is where this came from you can find oak pallets sometimes you know and depending on what it has carried if something's coming from brazil some of the woods they have over here are certainly to us exotic species so they might use some of them for pallet building dustin and i were in australia doing a workshop and their pallet wood was it was some name i can't even pronounce or remember like it was amazing gum? it was what like river gum or something yeah no it wasn't river gum but it, it had this almost tiger maple hardwood look we had to pre-drill everything that was the perils of it but it was beautiful i wanted to take it all home to them it was garbage so it depends where you're from and they were speaking highly of oregon pine and other things that we consider like whatever so um a couple methods first and foremost if you're just looking for firewood the smash and trash method. It's not gonna get any usable building wood, but you can just kick in most of these planks. Not not on this one, but on the thinner ones. You know, just play Lou Ferrigno, Incredible Hulk, the thing, you just stomp on them, bust them up, pry them apart, burn them. You can get little chunks out for firewood. Um, another method is simply to use, you know, a crowbar, wrecking bar, pry bar, and depending on the thickness, see what you can do in terms of lifting these off. Now, already I'm getting resistance because they put these together with ring shank nails or fluted nails, uh, they're designed to not come apart easily. So one method would be to carefully use a pry bar or a flat bar and get under the edges. You're gonna have to work this side than the other because you're gonna hear some cracking because you're gonna, with the board this wide, you're gonna peel up one side but not the other. And when the board cups too much, it's gonna crack. So, another so that's one method right there. Um, the one I prefer is simply using a circular saw. And someone was talking about this earlier when they did a build. Uh, I think Dan, Dan Sullivan mm -hmm. in their tiny house. It's the the cut and rock method. So this is a cool Milwaukee circular saw <laughs> that I actually gave to Marty as a, as a thank you gift once upon a time. So that's Marty's. Yeah, this is Marty's. Yeah. So generally set the depth here. I'm gonna. Uh, I'm going to create some waste, unfortunately, but these ends with all the nails in them are less likely to come off clean as compared to the center meat right here. So I'm going to make my cut here and here, and if all goes well, you can rock the board off the central support or strut right here. It's going to get loud. This one I could, have cut, uh, could have cut a little closer to here. I've wasted about three quarters of an inch. Not really gonna matter, because we'll probably just burn most of this anyway. 
Um, I will caution you, see the, the spacers they use uh, right here, mm -hmm. where the stamps are in the end? Those are like giant chunks of OSB, just sawdust glued together. When you throw those in a campfire, if you're just getting rid of wood, they stink terribly. Don't use this as firewood. Um, a lot of this wood around here, you're not going to want to use as your primary uh, you know, home heating wood because it burns too fast and too bright. It's really not good for your flue and for your wood stove. Great kindling though. Now that I've uh, made those cuts, I might be able to rock these off. And this is a thick pallet, so it's not going to be as easy as some. And something's in the way here. It's not going to come off. Try the smaller one first. Yeah, there we go. This has a few nails in it. You can just pound those nails back and pull them out. If you want, you know, you want the nails left in. Some of these nails get so old just by, you know, metal has memory. You can bend them back and forth till they snap off. The heads would be left behind. But if you get a plane in this wood, you don't want to leave <laughs> anything in there. You're going to ruin your blades over and over. So I'm going to put this one aside, nails down. It's a nice board, really, when you look at it. Like, look at the thickness here. Three quarters of an inch, actually, maybe a little more. Nice end grain. And this is stuff <laughs> all across the U.S. of A. that's being chucked daily. So you can do the same, rock these off. Um, the other method, and I should have left one that I didn't cut, is take a pallet buster. These were hard to find initially before pallet wood became this shabby chic or, you know, rustic modern craze with, you know, home decor. It's basically just a giant pry bar, in essence, a big fork like tool. Um, you can use these without having to bend so much to pry and work off pallets. Because I cut this one, I'm not getting the leverage I need, but slowly you just go down a line. And since I'm not 18 anymore, I don't have to keep bending down and crawling around like Gala. <laughs> and uh, you can work it from all angles. And, you know, boom, you can hear it. Pallet board here. So pallet board number two, method number three, potentially is the, the pallet buster here. You can buy this, I think I got an Amazon. Believe it or not, they ship this for free. The thing's pretty heavy. Uh, I was like, 50 bucks you can make some they have plans where you can take all like common hardware parts and l brackets and nuts and bolts uh something a friend of mine animal man survivor dun, dun, dun. should try on his channel <laughs> but i hear that when you make your own not only does it take time in the end run it's not really much cheaper so these work pretty darn well i think it's well worth the investment to purchase um i will take when i get all these off if i'm not burning the whole piece sometimes i'll just go down and just smash these other pieces off and use them as kindling in my wood stove because I do heat my house with wood or supplement, uh, supplement with wood. Another method is to take a sawzall. Michael Jansen who runs Tiny House Design, he built a pallet house or started one once upon a time. Like many other people, he thought the idea was great and never completed it. So he used the sawzall method where with blades, metal cutting blades, he just went behind each of these planks here between this support, the strut here and the actual plank and cut all the nails. You're left with the nail heads and sawzall blades do not last forever. So you're getting a free pallet, but over the course of him building his tiny pallet house, God knows how many blades he went through. So you're buying sawzall and reciprocal saw, reciprocating saw blades over and over. Not as cost effective, uh, but you do get the whole board in a lot of cases and it is pretty quick albeit very, very noisy. Some of the other methods, you know, I guess if you want to call it a fifth method of dismantling a pallet, is once you get these back pieces off, and this one right here, when I look it over, it's garbage anyway, it's so rotten. When I get this off, 3D. Oh. Um, if I buzz this off, I now have access, if this were not cut, to pound this from behind and to do it carefully, strategically. It's all about strategery to knock this plank off here. Um, what you'll find though is you get overzealous and start smashing them off. You can use a rubber mallet for this too. You start pulling nails through the wood, cracking some of the wood 
and the thinner the planks, the more chance there is, or greater chance there is, that you're going to screw up that board. So I don't even bother oftentimes with the planks that are half an inch thick. They are good for wall work in the tiny house, let's say, because they're light. But to me, it's just like I'd rather use or buy something else.